Welcome back. I'm the Dr. Bob Lee from 107.5 WPLS. And yes, you're watching Open. Our next guest is the Grammy-nominated musician, producer, author, educator, and former city councilman of Durham, North Carolina. Yeah, I rode there, there all the time. Maybe you can give me one of those little passes to get through. We'll talk <laughs> about that later on. <laughs> He's here to speak about his Black to the Future album, his upcoming children's book, and reflect on uh, how his family's legacy and politics has impacted his career in both fields. So please welcome to the show, Pierce Freelon. Pierce, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Lee. Before we begin, talk a little bit about your family legacy. Yes. Well, um, you know, a couple days ago, uh, Sidney Portier passed away, and I watched an interview with him where he was talking about how he was standing on the shoulders of giants. And that yeah. is something my grandmother has been telling me since I was a young kid, you are standing on the shoulders of giants. And, um, you know, Sidney Portier is one of those giants that I yeah. think of as like a OG who just paved the way trailblazer, you know, a lot of firsts and, uh, for him to, for, to hear him say like, nah, this is Paul Robeson for me. It's Hattie yeah. Daniel for me, you know, we really, as a people are building on a foundation and a legacy of, uh, of excellence that goes back uh, decades and centuries. Um, so in, in my story, in my family, uh, I've got some wonderful role models. Um, my great grandfather, this was my dad's uh, grandfather, Alan Freelon, uh, was a Harlem Renaissance painter and an educator who ran for uh, for state to be a state representative in Pennsylvania in 1949. Um, yeah. You know, his uh, grandson, my dad, uh, was a, a, an architect. He passed away about two years ago, was an architect and photographer and mentor and educator, um, Phil Freelon. My mother is a jazz vocalist and her mom was a, you know, organizer and a, a business owner, a hairdresser. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, just surrounded by people who worked hard. Uh, my grandmother always said, uh, mediocrity is not an option. Excellence is the standard, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the type of thing like a, like a 12 year old doesn't want to hear, <laughs> but you come to appreciate with age and with wisdom, like, okay, what you really meant was, you know, go hard, go in, like put yeah. everything out, leave it all on the field. Like, like work hard and, and find something that you really care about and do it every day, you know, uh, like there's no tomorrow. And uh, I appreciate that those values were instilled in me by my ancestors, for sure. Yeah. Oh, and you spoke about uh, people whose shoulders we stood on. And I put this book together. And there's a lot of people in here whose shoulders we stood on. Mm -hmm. I got to look in here and see if I... Uh, Put your great grandfather in here. <laughs> but there's, there's a lot of them, though. There's a lot of them. There's, there's a lot of them. We have so and, much to be proud of. Yes, and and you got into speaking of uh, students and children, you got into writing uh, children's books, right? You have one. Uh, what inspired your decisions to create the um, a children's album? Well, uh, children's music is an important uh, space. For, for my voice. So I'm a father, uh, I've got um, a son and a daughter. And uh, as a parent, you know, it's there's an interesting shift that happens. So, you know, before kids and me and my wife are on a date night or I'm going to hang out with my friends to play uh -huh. basketball or whatever, there's a certain soundtrack that I listen to in the car. And now all of a Which sudden- is that? <laughs> well, it's a lot of stuff these days. Uh -huh. You know, it's it's everyone from Earth, Wind, and Fire, Rick James uh -oh. to 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 Tupac and um, J. Cole. You know, Lauren Hill. Yeah. I've, I have a wide variety of tastes, but uh, you know, when when I get in the car with those baby seats in the back, I gotta be a little more intentional about what exactly. I play. Um, you know, and and so thinking about children's music, uh, you know, there are some artists out there that make music for kids and a lot of that music didn't really speak to me culturally. It didn't speak to my tastes and as far as somebody who came up in hip hop and listens to soul and funk and jazz. Yeah. I, I didn't hear a lot of music for children that was uh, geared towards um, those aesthetics. Uh, yeah. So 
you know, I, I decided to be the change that I wanted to see and, and create the sound that I wanted to hear for my kids. That's how you do that. That's mm -hmm. how you do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah and, and it's been a wonderful journey, um, you know, thinking about uh, fatherhood and exploring that musically and, um, you know, and making music with my children. My daughter Stella is all over wow. this, this Grammy nominated album, Black to the Future. Uh -huh. Uh, and in between songs, I, I talked to kids, my children, my nieces and nephews, and I found a bunch of old VHS tapes of me when I was a kid <laughs> with my siblings and my parents. Yeah. So the album is full of children's voices, um, you know, just talking about, talking about, you know, life from a kid's perspective. So it's pretty cool. Yes, yes. So how important has African-American culture and identity uh, to ancestry been throughout your career, your musical career? Uh, it's important. A friend of mine, a sister named Omi Shade, Bernie Scott, um, she's a, a really amazing podcaster. She told me once that, um, she says, you have ancestors in your bloodline. Those are people you're related to, um, you know, the people who make up your DNA. Then there's ancestors in your cultural through line. So these might be people who who you're not blood related to, but whose work inspires, you know, the work that you yeah. do and the role that, that you play in this life. Uh, and we've already named a few of mine, um, but, you know, to, to throw a few more on there, people like uh, Dr. Maya Angelou is what I consider an ancestor of my cultural through line. Uh, what yeah. she did as, not just as a poet, but her activism in the community was an inspiration for me as an artist who was also involved a, as a public servant. Uh, but for me, the, it's the artivists, those art artists, activists, the Nina Simones, the Billie Holidays, uh, the, the Ernie Barneses, uh, the Polly Murrays that, that do it for me, the James Baldwins, you know, just the artist, organizer, activist. Um, those are the folks that, that really uh, have paved the way for me and, uh, and shown me a, a blueprint that you don't have to just be, you know, you don't have to, to just be one thing. You can be an artist, you can be a creative, and you can be, you know, public servant. You can get involved in politics, involved in your community. Those two things are not mutually exclusive. Yeah. Hey, how special was it for you um, to be able to produce a song Featuring your daughter, that must have been a wonderful feeling, you know, somebody in your family, your little one right there with you every step of the way of the process. It, it's great. I mean, this is the mic, actually, because most of <laughs> it was go. recorded. It was recorded here during COVID at the crib, like, yeah. you know, so if, think back this time, what, 18 months ago when I was recording Black to the Future, we were in the middle of a COVID pandemic. The kids were home from school. So I'm sitting in here in my office working on music. You know, my kids are like, I'm hungry. You know, like, I'm, you know what I mean? Like, help me with my math homework. Yeah. And I'm like, well, why don't you come over here? Let me teach you a little something. So I think, uh, you know, one of the hidden blessings of the pandemic was it really uh, brought our family, my nuclear family, uh, really close together, uh, you know, by necessity. Just being, we were parent slash teacher slash you know, babysitter slash, you know, uh, therapist, all the things. Um, That's right. And, uh, and we couldn't get away from each other. So uh, one way to transform that uh, closeness <laughs> into something productive was just to open up the studio uh, to the kids. Yeah. And Stella, in particular, my daughter, um, she really loved it in there. She never wanted to leave. And she loved speaking into a microphone and then hearing her voice back over yeah. speakers with music. It was like, I created that, you know? So it was great. Yeah, I mean, it's so nice to pull over a microphone and say, hey, let's get busy. Let's right, work. <laughs> right, right. At right. first they were voices, but he said, hey, play that back. Let me do it again, let me do it again. <laughs> yeah. I got with you, right? She said, this is what daddy's doing. I want to do right. that too. Right, right. And you know, I had a similar experience. My mother is a jazz vocalist. And um, while I never, I didn't spend a lot of time with her in recording studios because she often would go to New York or LA to record. Yeah. Um, you know, I was doing homework, you know, backstage as sound checks. I was 
So it came to... full circle. Right. Your mother did it for you and you did it for your daughter. Exactly. Yeah, the environment that, that I grew up in became, you know, the, the, the course that I pursued as an adult. And we'll see with Stella if she pursues music. I'm not sure if, yeah. if it's something that she'll take into adulthood, but it's certainly been a wonderful, um, you know, parent, father-daughter bonding thing for us yeah. now. That's a beautiful thing. Pierce, do you have any words of wisdom for people who are looking to get into this business of ours? Hmm, yeah, I think that we are in an interesting time for media makers. Um, you can, you know, buy a microphone for, for relatively cheap and start a podcast from your bedroom. Yeah. You, know, you can produce music. It used to be back in the 80s that, you know, you need to book a couple hours of studio time, you know, with um, but now with laptops, you have every instrument you could possibly imagine could yeah. be, um, could show up on a laptop and, uh, and you can play the notes, you know, one at a time through MIDI technology. So yeah. I think the time is now for creators to, uh, to speak their truth. Beautiful, man. Hey, listen, they're going to give me a hard rap. Uh, I want to talk to you, you know, forever because we, you, you you're very interesting. You got a lot of uh, great information that people want to know about. But the, where can we go to get more information on you? Yeah, you can just go to my website, piercefreelon.com. It's pierce like pierce your ear, F R E E L O N.com. That's where you'll find all my stuff. There you go. Pierce Freelon, former Durham City Councilman. I can't believe that, but that's a beautiful thing. And music musician and producer. Thank you. Got that album, Black to the Future. Make yep. sure you check it out. It's on thank that you. website that you spoke about. Pierce, yep. thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right. You're into sports? I sure am. All right. Coming up next, we have Bobby C. He has the latest in the world of sports next. <laughs>